Okay, so we start off by looking at our client now, the Fibonacci activity, which is going to eventually end up using the FibLib, but we want to make it slightly more interesting. For example, we want to make um, the UI allow us to select the algorithm, specify the N that we want to get Fibonacci of, and then, you know, initiate some click some button to, for example, get the result. So let, we'll, I guess, start off by looking at our layout, which is right here. And here is our main.xml, and here's the strings.xml, which defines its values. Like, for example, here's the hello world um, little string, which will, for example, change into, I don't know, get your Fibonacci numbers here. And so... I don't know, maybe we'll capitalize this. And so now that I've, you know, changed the string, if I go to the main.xml, you'll see that's what that sh shows up. And if I want to make it slightly nicer, I can say, okay, I'm going to change its gravity uh, to be centered. So gravity, center. Okay, so now it's centered and maybe, I don't know, I can also change the text size and we'll just hard code it here, something like, I don't know. 25 SPs, and so now we have the initial um, the title. So next, what we want to do is add some sort of um, an edit button, sorry, form widgets um, that will the user will be able to you know type in their uh, their you know uh, number into. Um, now, of course, I always keep forgetting where the edit buttons are, so for some reason they're not under the form widgets. Uh, I was going to assume that they're going to be under here. So I just want to find, for example, this one. Um, the, the reason why I chose that one is because uh, I like number four too. No, I just want something that only takes in numbers. So you'll see that basically what happened is that this became an edit text um, that you know has the input type of number. Um, I can as get, assign this some sort of an ID um, this will be necessary later on so I can actually know what the end was. So I don't know, maybe I'm going to call it input. That's it. I don't have to get much fancier than that. Um, that's that's the, the where the user is going to type in the number. The next one is going to be some sort of a, maybe a radio group. Uh, I want the user to be able to select from different uh, um, uh, options. So I'm actually going to go back to over here for widgets. Um, and here is a radio button. Uh, but of course, I want to somehow wrap these inside of a radio group, which I can never really quite find. I'm not sure where to keep them. Uh, anyway, so I guess I'll just wrap it up myself. So here, I'll actually just go drop to the XML. Um, you'll see that I have a radio button that, uh, for example, the text for the radio button could be say something like, this is going to be the strings of fib. Uh, JR, that's the, the, the first one that uh, we have here as an option, uh, which of course doesn't exist. And this is going to be the radio, we're going to call this, for example, uh, Fib JR, so that we know later on what the user has actually selected. Or maybe just for, for fun, because we're going to use lowercase, let's call this type Fib JR. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to click on save. This is going to complain. I'm going to go and say, okay, fix it by going and saying quick fix or command one. Um, extract the, you know, the style. I don't know why it's picking the style. That's a little odd. Uh, it's supposed to say extract text. Oh, well. So I guess I'm going to go over here and in my strings and duplicate one of these. So on my Mac, I can do command shift or command option down to duplicate this line and say this is going to be, you know, FibJR. Uh, you might as well go and define the other ones. Um, these are going to be the different titles the user is going to be able to select. So this is the JI, the NR, and, oops, NR and NI. So just to change these as well, NI, NR, whoops. So I should really look at what I'm typing and and I done so now that I've defined these um, I can go back here just click on save this should uh, whoops no wonder this didn't work it's supposed to be a string not a strings okay so 
Now what I'll do is I'll actually wrap all of these inside of, uh, when I say all of these, we don't, I don't have the other ones yet, uh, radio group. Um, and so inside of the radio group, I'm going to have a lot of these uh, um, radio buttons. So now uh, I want to be able to select the, 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 the or, or know what was the selection, uh, which radio button was selected. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to basically assign this sort of uh, radio group some sort of an ID. So for example, uh, ID, oops, ID equals, maybe I'll call it, you know, type, of course, you need to go and have it be created. So plus ID. And I'm going to change the default orientation because I believe by default it goes vertically. So I'm going to change orientation to be um, horizontal. Um, that I think should get the job done. And so um, otherwise, I guess the layout uh, width wise, uh, I'm going to have it uh, match the parent. So width or layout width is match parent. I'm using control space just for auto completion and layout um, layout height height is wrap content right so only use as much space as necessary um, on this radio button itself I gave it each bo uh, this button an ID I gave it some uh, height I actually want the the I guess the height to be I guess match parent uh, when the width would make makes sense. Um, and on the height, uh, so let's go and say uh, match parent. And then on the height, uh, I can probably leave it as, as wrap content, of course, because these are going to be greedy. I need to also add the Android, uh, whoops, uh, layout weight. So weight of something like, let's say, one, so that they're all exactly the same. Um, I believe this should be it. Uh, so now what I need to do is just duplicate this four times or three more times. So I now have four radio buttons. Uh, this one is going to be the FibJR. We'll make this be a FibJI. This could be, of course, this is going to say JI as well, which is the one we created previously. This is going to say NR. This is going to say NR again. And finally, we'll have a version that is NI for native iterative and NI over here. So that's it. Uh, this is where we are at the moment. So we basically have the title, we have the number the user is going to type, and then we have the four different radio buttons. That's what we've accomplished. Um, we only need two more things. Uh, we I want to have a button the user is going to be able to click on. So let's say a button goes right here. And this button is going to have maybe, I don't know, um, we can call it, say, ID of button, for lack of a better, better term. Uh, with, we can have it be, take up, you know, match parent. Uh, whoops, I don't know what I pressed. So let's go back. Um, let's go back here. So match parent. Uh, width is the same, and then the text, I just don't like to hard code these things, so, so I'm going to say string slash, I don't know, button, for the lack of, again, better, better, or actually I should say output, because the other one was, no, let's just call it button, the next one is going to be output. Oh yeah, so this doesn't work, so let's see if this allows me to create a string resource, it does, I'm just going to call it um, get Fibo, Fibonacci, get Fibonacci result or something like that and so now that we have that um, let's see what this looks like that's pretty good finally we need some sort of a text area where we'll be able to um, you know drop the the final result into so um, the, here's a text view um, maybe we'll give we'll call this the output that's where we're going to write the result into so output um, and we're going to have the width and the height basically be both match parents, so take up the rest of the space. And there's not going to be any sort of text. Uh, we should probably just get rid of the text. That said, let's actually just see where it's going to look, uh, look like. It's going to sit right here. Um, I do want to maybe center this. So, for example, Android, oops, Android um, Gravity 
whoops, Android colon gravity, uh, we could say center, like that. Um, and that should probably be it. I guess one, one, one more last thing is we can go and give it some sort of text size to make it look a little bigger and just so that it's easier to see. So something like, I don't know, 20 SP would be probably good enough. And now we really don't need any sort of text. This is going to be the output of our program. So here we are. I believe we have the entire UI designed. So this is the input. This is the selection of the algorithm. Here's the button and here's the output. Now the next step is for us to go and actually implement the Fibonacci activity.